Well, hello and welcome to all of you, whether you are with us here on our campus or you are joining us online. We form one community today, and it is great to be with you. My name is Daniel. This is my partner in crime for the day, Tom Corcoran. <laughs> You've been waiting to use that and say that, like, right? You want, you want. I have. Usually, it's you that do the greeting, so I get to. I get to be the partner in yeah. coming today. <laughs> well, we're so glad you are joining us, no matter who you are, where you're from. Um, we want, and we want to know where that is. So join us in the chat room. It'll let us know where you are joining us from. What's the weather like? It's a beautiful day right here in Baltimore. Uh, join us in the chat room. I encourage you to share this experience with others. You never know who you, that sharing this with might make an impact and change somebody else's life. Life, connect them to God. Uh, reminder: We are on all the different platforms, from Facebook to YouTube to Apple TV to Roku. And, of course, our own website, churchnativity.com. And if you are here because somebody has made an invitation and you are new, welcome. We love welcoming new people into our church community. And if you are new, we have a special gift to thank you for being with us today. You can go to churchnativity.com slash new, churchnativity.com slash new, and we will give you a free gift just to thank you for being with us today. And if you are watching us uh, with uh, some other people, either in your home or doing a Facebook watch party, so glad you are joining us. Let us know who you are and maybe let us know. Tell us in the chat. Maybe we'll give you a shout out later. Yeah, we're in the first week of our new message series and the first week of our new season of Advent today. And we're starting this new message series called The Secrets of Christmas. It's going to be great. Next few weeks, we have a little sneak preview of what's to come today. Check this out. We are so familiar these days with the Christmas story that it's easy to forget there was a very small circle of people that actually knew who Jesus was and what was happening at the time of his birth. And so that circle eventually opened up and now Jesus has spread worldwide, but God still continues to reveal his secrets to those who are listening for them. And so we want to be the kind of people who listen for God's secrets, and we're going to work on being those people in the next few weeks. This will take us all the way up to Christmas Eve, this message series. And so we're looking forward to that. But we have lots to come in the next month. There is a ton going on, a ton going on, Daniel, This uh, from now until Christmas. Uh, next Tuesday, December 8th, uh, we have, we're going to have opening up our church for a day united in prayer. It's also the Feast of Immaculate Conception. And we, we did this for um, this day of prayer, united in prayer, the day of the election. And we just had such a positive response of people just being so glad to come back into the church. People hadn't been in the church since March, since the whole right. COVID crisis developed, and they knew it was really just good for their heart and soul. So if you're in the North Baltimore County area, uh, mark that count, mark that on your calendar, or you, or you can come from anywhere you want, Daniel. You want to just come in town for that December 8th. Uh, we'll be open up for United in Prayer, and we'll have more about that in time to come. Yeah, and then December 11th and 12th, we're going to have this amazing, beautiful event here on our campus. You'll want to come with your family. It's going to be socially distant and very safe. It's going to be our Festival of Lights, and our campus is going to be lit up. That'll be the start of it. It's going to be up all the way until January 3rd, but really that first weekend, that Friday and Saturday, December 11th and 12th, it will be a beautiful event here. So we want you to come and join us on our campus for that. We hope that you and your family can come and see what's happening on December 11th and 12th because it really is going to be special and that's going to be the start of our Christmas giving drive 
Yeah, so that weekend we encourage you to, to bring toys, bikes, clothing, whatever, to come support our Baltimore mission partners. That We'll have a list of that up on our website at churchnativity.com slash Christmas. Again, each year at Advent, we like to support our different partners. Uh, we've supported Kenya and Haiti, and this year right here in our own backyard in, in Baltimore City. So there's a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different things you can give uh, to support those mission partners, churchnativity.com slash Christmas. You can find that full list. And then also at churchtv.com slash Christmas, there's where you can find out or how you can sign up for our Christmas Eve party, Christmas Eve kits. Well, I'm Christmas Eve that. kit. That's there you right. Go. <laughs> yeah. You do not want to have Christmas Eve without this kit. It really is going to make your experience that much better. And it doesn't matter if you have one person or if you're going to be a large party, we will customize a box just for you and even send it to you. If you're not local, you can't pick it up in the next few weeks. We are going to send it to you free of cost. That's our gift to you this year. Now we have been telling one thing that's going to go in that kit each week. Last week we told you you can get an orange the official nativity ornament to put on your tree this year. The next thing for this week, you're going to get the official, not just any, but the official candle, ah, the same okay, candles we that we hold during Silent Night when we celebrate yeah, that You don't together. want just any candle. Not you just want, any candle. You want the official nativity These are candle. the candle. So that we are going to be lighting those up all together as one community all around the area, all around the world on Christmas Eve. It's going to be a beautiful celebration. So again, sign up for your kit at churchnativity.com slash Christmas. Also at churchnativity.com slash Christmas, you can find out uh, information about our Christmas Eve Mass. Of course, it will be all online on Christmas Eve. Uh, we'll, mass will be at 4, but 3.30. We will have a, a program beforehand, so you're going to check that out and tune in then. And then on Christmas Day, we'll be open as well. Uh, registration for that will begin on December 1st if you want to come in person on Christmas Day. Uh, but be thinking about on Christmas Eve, who are those people you can be inviting? Your friends, your neighbors, family members to join us online. Again, this is, we really believe, a huge opportunity this year to be connecting people who are unconnected to Christ and His church. They're, they will be looking for something. So please be looking for those invitations that you can make to join us online on Christmas Eve. Yeah, and you know, Christmas is a time when a lot of people come back to church for the first time in a long time, or maybe even the first time ever. And so we, right after Christmas, are going to start a new program. Um, we've run it one time before, but it's going to be beginning again called Starting Point. This is the place to come to ask all of your questions, to bring your doubts, and to really explore the foundations of our faith. Why do we believe what we do? And to ask those in a safe environment in a small group setting. And so what's going to be virtual, it's a great experience. Um, we have a little video to tell you a little bit more about it, so check this out. We all have questions about spiritual matters. Questions about God, Jesus, the Bible. But who can we ask? Most of the time, we don't stop to talk about those things. But we all think about them at some point. Your questions about the Christian faith weren't developed in an instant. And you deserve more than a quick one-sided answer. You have a story that led you here. Maybe an answer isn't even what you need. It's why we created a place where we can talk about it. Together. It doesn't matter where you stand. It doesn't matter where you're from. We just want to help you take the next step. And it starts with a conversation. Starting point. So starting point will begin on January 3rd. And again, if you are interested in learning, exploring more about faith, looking for a starting point, or if you know someone who is, it'll be a great place to start, safe environment to ask questions, share your story. Uh, that begins, again, the weekend after, uh, the first weekend in January, January 3rd. Well, we are moving closer to the start of Mass. I want to encourage you now to kind of get rid of any of those distractions, prepare your mind, prepare your heart uh, for what God wants to say to you today. If you have young children in All Stars or our Time Travelers program, you might want to get that, that iPad out, that laptop, get that ready and queued up. Go to churchintivity.com slash kids. Get that ready so when we move to the children's liturgy of the Word, it's into the liturgy of the Word, you have that all queued up and ready to, get, uh, ready to go. And again, I want to encourage you to fully participate, sit, stand, sing, worship, um, and enter into this experience. Get ready for week one of The Secrets of Christmas. Good morning, church. We're so glad you're here. Please stand and worship with us. Your love's so great, Jesus in all things. 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Hello and welcome. Welcome to everybody joining us here on Ridgely Road and everybody joining us online today. Today is the first Sunday in the season of Advent. We begin our annual preparation for the Nativity of the Lord. As we begin, let's place ourselves confidently and prayerfully before God's mercy.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet Christ with righteous deeds at his coming. Through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. We're especially glad you're joining us if you don't consider yourself a church person or religious person. This is a message for our regular attenders and members. Last weekend was our stewardship weekend, the one weekend of the year where we ask you to make a financial commitment to the parish in the year ahead. If you were able to make a faith commitment, thank you very much. We appreciate that. If you would have not made a commitment yet but would like to, you still can. Go to churchnativity.com slash stewardship, churchnativity.com slash stewardship. There you can make your faith commitment for the year ahead. And if you have any questions about giving to Nativity, you can email us at giving at churchnativity.com, giving at churchnativity.com. While we are now entering into the liturgy of the word, we remind families with kindergarten, elementary school kids of our Time Travelers program. You can find that right now at churchnativity.com slash kids. They're beginning a brand new message series called The Top Secrets of Christmas. And now it is time to hear from the word of God. So get ready, be prepared, because God has something he wants to say to you. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. 
Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people, all our good deeds like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoiced in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Speak, O oh Lord, your servant, listen. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. 
He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. There is something absolutely irresistible about a secret. If someone says, I have something to tell you that I haven't told anyone else, they have your attention. They have your immediate and total attention. Or you probably had the experience where someone starts to tell you something about something or someone and then stops. They interrupt themselves to say, I shouldn't be telling you this. It's tantalizing. Your curiosity goes through the roof. You need to know in that moment, you need to know more, more than anything else in the world. A quick search can find plenty of blogs and articles to back this up. I found the five secrets of growing your business, the three secrets of effective communication with teenagers, the number one secret to stemming hair loss, or even more broadly, the secret of raising smarter kids, the secret of never fighting with your spouse, the secret to a happy family. We want to know. We all want to know. Just the word secret gets our attention, and fuels our desire to know. This happens all the time in all of our relationships, but it's also what drives much of our media and is at the heart of a lot of entertainment that we enjoy. We are interested in secrets even if they don't have a big impact on our lives, even if they're irrelevant to our lives, even if they're simply irrelevant, period. Our brains are wired in such a way that we want to know. Just as a gift package must be unwrapped, a card must be open, a curtain must be pulled back, secrets create tension that we need to resolve. They stir up curiosity that motivates us to listen and learn. But why? Why do we have secrets? Why do we keep secrets? Lots of reasons, I suppose. We keep secrets because perhaps they contain sensitive information that we're not comfortable sharing. Or even more basically, confidential information. Information that's just nobody else's business. Sometimes it's just prudent to keep a secret. 
It's in our strategic best interest to do so. You keep a secret because it's just not time to reveal it yet. When a couple first finds out they're having a baby, they usually keep that information a secret for a period of time. It just seems like a prudent thing to do. Changing jobs, moving to a new house, selecting a school, these are things we often keep quiet until the proper time when plans are well established. We keep secrets for very good reasons, but then we reveal secrets for very good reasons too. You might choose to reveal a secret because you have a burden that you're carrying it, and sharing that secret lightens the load. We share secrets because we need help in carrying out some plan that we've formed. Maybe it's a really special Christmas gift that you're preparing or a surprise party that you're trying to pull off and you need help to make it happen. You share the secret. Perhaps you share a secret, secret to deepen a connection and build a relationship with somebody else. If we share a secret, we share a very special bond. We reveal our secrets because we want someone else to know us and to know our hearts. We all have a fundamental need to be known, to be understood. We need to share our story with others, including our struggles and our fears, our hopes and our dreams, and so we share our secrets. But who do we share our secrets with? Well, obviously, we're gonna share our secrets with people who are good listeners, with people who are willing to listen to us. If they're not listening, why bother? What's the point? But also you reveal a secret to someone who can keep your secret, someone you trust, someone who is for you, someone who cares for you and your secrets, who even treasures them. For secrets that are really important, secrets that will eventually be revealed to others, maybe everybody, perhaps we reveal them gradually to an ever-widening circle of people. I remember when we began discussing and planning for the building of this new church, we began with a very small circle of people, and only eventually did we grow that circle to include more. And as the circle grew, we fine-tuned our plans. We, we, we improved our messaging. We got better at communicating our plans. So there's a lot more that we could say about secrets, obviously. But basically, we have secrets. We're interested in secrets. We share the secrets. You know all this. I, I know you know all this, but here's something perhaps you don't know or have simply never thought about before. God has secrets. God has secrets. It's true. He does. Perhaps you've never considered that before, but it's perfectly true, and nothing could be clearer in Scripture. Jesus tells us as much in the gospel reading that we read today for the first Sunday of Advent. He says, the Son of Man, that's him, will come with great power and glory, but you do not know when. You do not know when. It's a secret. Some secrets God keeps, like when we can expect the second coming of Christ at the end of time. We don't know. That's why, by the way, you should never pay any attention to self-proclaimed psychics who predict the end and who pretend to know when and where and how it will be. They don't know. They can't know because Jesus told us it's a secret. God has secrets. Sometimes he hides those secrets from us. It's true. But here's the thing. He hides them for you, not from you. There's a difference. He hides secrets for you to encourage you, to care about them, to search for them, to find them, to learn from them, to treasure them. Why? Because he knows 
human nature. He invented it. One of your frustrations with God might be, why doesn't he just tell me? Why doesn't he just tell me which school to choose? Why doesn't he just tell me what job to pursue? Why doesn't he just tell me who I will marry or how to handle my kids? God could tell you. You're right. He, he could. But God knows that when the tension is resolved, when the mystery is solved, you'll probably be a lot less likely to seek him, to seek his wisdom. He knows that if he just gives you all the information up front every time when it comes to everything, might begin to appear unimportant, might fail to interest and engage you. God knows that more than his answers, you need him. You need to engage with him. So God in his wisdom keeps secrets for you. On the other hand, of course, obviously, there are some secrets he does share. At one point, Jesus told his friends and followers that. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. When we're learning from his preaching and teaching, that's what we're learning, the secrets of the kingdom of God. God keeps secrets for you, but he has secrets for you, secrets he wants to share with you, secrets about what he's doing in the world. And yet another place in Scripture, as in so many places, we read about secrets. It's the prophet Amos who teaches, surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secrets to the prophets. He does nothing without revealing his secrets to the prophets. Who are the prophets? Who are the prophets? We think of prophets as great and mighty heroes of the Old Testament with superpowers and supercharged messages from the Almighty, and that's true. But the category prophet is actually much wider. Prophets are also simply anybody God can trust with a secret. Prophets are people who are willing to listen to God and connect to his heart, his dreams, his desires for the future. You may think of prophets as distant mystical figures, but every Christ follower is called to be a prophet. In fact, if you have been baptized, you are a prophet. You've been baptized a prophet, you've been named a prophet, you were anointed with the chrism oil as a prophet. A prophet is simply someone God trusts with a secret. Someone God trusts with knowledge and information about what he's going to do in the world. And then in turn is willing to work with his plan to help bring his plan to fulfillment. God acts in the world, but before he acts, he lets his prophets know what he's going to do so they can be a part of the plan. And if you think about it, that's really basically the whole Christmas story. When God came in history that first Christmas, when he came in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth he came quietly. Most of the world didn't even notice. And he revealed his plan secretly to the main characters we associate with the Christmas story. Mary, Joseph, the wise men, the shepherds, Elizabeth. God chose to reveal his plans to them quietly and secretly, and he did it in different ways depending upon the person involved, the circumstances, what it was he was sharing with them, and what it was he was asking them to do, their particular role in the plan. To the central figure in the story, Mary, he reveals the heart of the secret. And he does it in a pretty special, spectacular kind of way. There's an epiphany of an angel, and not just any angel, the archangel, Gabriel. He sends Gabriel to Mary because she has found favor with God. And since she has found favor with God, she will bear a son who will be the savior of the world. That's God's plan for Mary. 
But before Mary can be a part of the plan and participate in it, she has to be brought into the secret. She could hardly have participated if she didn't know the secret. Same for Joseph. He's let in on the secret, but in a different way. While an angel appears to Mary, God reveals his secret to Joseph in a dream. Actually, two dreams. Like Mary, it was critical that Joseph understand the secret, perhaps even more so because in Joseph's case, as events began to unfold, he was ready to walk away from the whole deal. The shepherds learn about this secret from a whole chorus of angels, and the wise men are given a mysterious star to follow. But consider Elizabeth, Mary's cousin. She comes to an understanding of God's secret, but in a way we might more easily appreciate and and understand. She enters into the secret through prayer, personal, private prayer. And in prayer, she experiences the grace of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Scripture tells us that she was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in this grace, she recognizes what God was up to. You know, these stories are not just stories or fairy tales. And they're not just ancient history. Nor are they illustrations of heroes and saints who are so completely above us that we'll never live up to their model. Instead, they are models for us to follow. They show us the kind of relationship God wants to have with us. They show us the way our Heavenly Father wants to relate to us in our generation. God is still alive and active in the world. He has plans for you. He wants to share them with you, and He wants your help. So over the course of this series and this season, I invite you to make two commitments. Think about it, making two commitments. First, make a commitment to be a part of this series by joining us in the weeks ahead, either here on Ridgely Road or online. Commit to the whole series as well as to joining us on Christmas when we'll bring this series to a finale. Second, commit to a daily prayer time, a daily quiet time, if only five or six minutes a day. And if you need help with prayer, and by the way, most people do, you can sign up for our daily devotional. It's called Worship Fully. You can find it at churchnativity.com slash next steps slash prayer. We'll send it to you daily first thing every morning, and it's completely free. The online devotional is free, but if you want to upgrade your seasonal experience, check out another resource, which is a daily devotional that Tom Corcoran and I wrote specifically for this Christmas of 2020. It's called Messages of Joy, and it's available on Amazon. Even just a few minutes a day, can be a way of doing exactly what Jesus told us to do all the time and the church invites us to do at this time, this Advent season. He told his disciples to simply be watchful, be alert. Be watchful and alert because God wants to speak to you and he wants to speak through you. In this series, this Advent, we're working at becoming exactly the kind of people that God can trust with secrets. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With joy and hope at the coming of the Lord Jesus, we turn to him in prayer, 
remembering our needs and the needs of the world. For our parish community, that separated by distance, we might be united in anticipation of Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace on earth, for unity in our nation, that good will prevail among people everywhere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, members of our military, for all healthcare professionals, that the Lord guard and protect them always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and the unemployed, for the sick of mind or body, for those suffering from violence or oppression, for all those who have suffered because of this crisis, that they may know comfort and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are alone during this Advent season, that the incarnation would be a reminder to them of God's constant presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they would know light and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. Grant what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are now entering into the offertory, which is a time of giving. Jesus said this, that where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. In other words, your heart just follows your money. So if you want to grow to love God, we give. And so if you'd like to make a gift at this time, you can text the word give and the dollar amount. Give and the dollar amount on, this, on the number on the screen below. Uh, if Once you make that gift, you'll be given the opportunity to set up a recurring gift. Just simply follow the prompts to do so. Thank you for your partnership in the gospel. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ, the everlasting light, Son of righteousness, arise in triumph.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our prayer and offering, make it acceptable to you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, opening for us the way to salvation. Now we watch for the day when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest. Now with the angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we sing the endless hymn of your glory. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis Etera gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui veni. In nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed, Holy Lord, the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit, so they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, Saint Michael, the Archangel, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, and in him. God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Sinner, wait no more. Love has brought. 
breaks the dawn of salvation. Darkness reigns no more, for Jesus is great. May these mysteries, O Lord our God, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us to love the things of eternity. We pray through Christ our Lord. Well, thanks for joining us on this first week of Advent. Special thanks to you if you are new or relatively new around here. We would love to meet you. Head to our website, churchnativity.com new. When you do, we have a free gift to thank you for joining us. Well, this is the first week of our series, The Secrets of Christmas. Our pastor told us today that God wants to speak to us and through us. And so to listen to his secrets, he gave us two challenges. One, to be part of the series in the weeks to come. And second, to practice a daily habit of prayer. We hope that we'll see you in the coming weeks. We especially hope to see you on December 24th.
for Christmas Eve, and we want you to have a Christmas Eve kit just like this that is our gift to you this year. We're going to customize it for you, whether you are a party of one or you have many people. We will get one ready just for you. If you're not local, we'll even send it to you free of cost. So be sure that you go and sign up for your Christmas Eve kit today. I just heard this morning that we are over a thousand kits so far, and there's a limited number. So be sure that you get yours at churchnativity.com slash Christmas. And Kelly, they're big, not just at Nativity, but these kits are getting big everywhere. They are, and little did we know, we started a trend, and just this morning when I got to the office, we had a package waiting for us. This is a Christmas Eve kit from St. John's Greek Orthodox Church in Tampa, Florida. They have been following Rebuild Parish with our Wednesday webinars, and they were inspired by Nativity's Christmas Eve kit and decided to do one for their community, and they wanted us to see what they put together. So it's very sweet. They're very thankful. Very thankful for our help, even with a non-Catholic church. Yes. <laughs> yes, we love all churches, Catholic and otherwise, too. So high hope St. John's Greek Orthodox Church in Tampa has a beautiful advent, as do we hope you do as well. And if you'll stand right now, wherever you are, I will give you a blessing for the week ahead. May God, may the God of infinite goodness drive fear and darkness from your lives and illuminate your heart with the light of his coming. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith joyful in hope and tireless in charity. May he bless you this day and each day of the coming week in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. so much for joining us for this first week of our series, The Secrets of Christmas. And just a reminder for all things Christmas, from those Christmas Eve kits to more about our Festival of Lights to our, um, for all those things, to our Christmas Eve plans, go to churchnativity.com slash Christmas, churchnativity.com slash Christmas. And just a reminder that after I'm finished here, we'll have some questions up on the screen. Uh, you can take that time to discuss whoever you've been experiencing this worship event with. Uh, so continue the conversation. Again, they'll come up on the screen when I am finished. Thanks again for being with us. We'll see you for next week for part two of The Secrets of Christmas.